Referring to this mic. We are live. Nice. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, ho, 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 Pete. Look at you. I am very festive today. <laughs> yes, you are. You got the Santa hat on. You got your beard ornaments flowing. My, my, are they beard balls? That's what I was going to call them, but I didn't want to go there this early in the show. <laughs> but it is 10 p.m. almost. And we're a little uh, bit. Of, little it bit is out. the witching hour, I guess. So, yeah. So we are now live here on YouTube. Welcome, everyone, to Trade of the Gotham tonight. Cheers, um, everyone. Yes, sorry for the lack of a border with our logo, our logo and background. We're still working on that that part of it, so uh, we will have um, we will have something like that soon. Uh, we're exploring some other technology that we might be using for this in the future. So, but for now, we're still with Zoom, as you can see. I'm sure it's somewhere on the, the screen. We don't see it, meet Pete and I, but I think on the YouTube screen. It's oh there. no, it's there. I see it. Are I got okay? I got YouTube up on the side. Just keep an eye on it. Okay. Steve Helm so, likes my. Uh... <laughs> 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 What's not to like, man? Look at that. That's you awesome. Like that? How come? Oh, let me just ask a question. How come we did Iceberg Loud? You were so against wearing a costume, but here we are, Christmas, and now you're all in the getup. This isn't a costume. I don't have to. Ah, okay. You know, like I dropped one of my balls. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> right. It happens for all of us. It's just you for a little later in life. Well, you just uh, <laughs> put that back on the beard there. There we go. <laughs> yes, sir. So, man, we haven't done one of these in a while. It's gonna be. This should be fun. It's been a hot minute. It's been a yeah. hot minute. Yeah, it's been a little bit, a little bit of a, of a, I think probably over a month, maybe, or maybe about a month mm -hmm. that we've done one of these. But uh, we've had stuff going on. Um, at least I have. It was my birthday and then the holidays. Yeah, I do nothing apparently. Eric's the only one with a life. No, that's not true. <laughs> I, talk, talk quickly about your, your pizza excursion you guys did. You and, and your buddy oh, uh, my buddy andy is yes. obsessed with dave portnoy and his uh one bite uh everybody knows the rules pizza adventures so right. um uh he came uh to home from uh new york city for thanksgiving weekend and we hit up the columbia inn restaurant i forget where it is as well as uh oh man well, angelino's restaurant in caldwell uh two fantastic pizzerias uh really thin pizza but absolutely delicious so uh if you're if you're a pizza lover definitely check out the one bite app uh because you're going to eat pizza the best pizza of your life uh since i've used that app myself i've i've avoided a lot of average pizza and there's a huge difference between amazing pizza uh and average pizza and you know eric you know this like living in the the pizza capital of the world which is the tri-state area yeah. we're very spoiled but there are yes. really even bad pizza places in our neck of the woods so yes we have we have been we are spoiled and uh you know but i don't know if everyone knows i lived in florida for four years and oh god Bad the first pizza. year and a half when i was down there i couldn't find a pizza spot and then when i found it the guy people were from brooklyn so it was cool you know i found new yorkers in florida had a good pizza place mm -hmm. and I finally found one. So as you can see, and I searched, I had to drive about 45 minutes to get to this place from where I live. See, if, you, so, if one bite was around back then, you would have had an easier opportunity because there's some places in Florida he's checked out. But um, yeah, Steve Helm. Uh, sorry, Steve. Uh, I will not stop posting pictures of the pizza because uh, <laughs> I want you guys to know <laughs> how delicious it at least looks. Uh, it was fantastic. But a uh, shout out to Steve who recently won our last um, yes. at a Gotham uh, Twitter contest. We have another one going on right now as we try to get to 250 followers. So if, um, you know, if you want to, if you want a shot at winning, uh, let me see here where I have the book with me. You do I'm have trying, it. Yes. I'm trying not to lose my balls. <laughs> where is he it? already lost one tonight, folks, but he got it back. One. He got it back. He got it back. If you want to win a signed copy of all-star Batman number one by Scott Snyder, complete with a certificate of authenticity from main street comics in Milltown, New Jersey. Uh, just uh, follow, like, retweet uh, our post, uh, which is pinned to the top of the Straight Outta Gotham Twitter page, and uh, you will be entered to win. Uh, as soon as we get to 250, we will announce the winner. So, yes. And don't forget to use the hashtag SOG. Uh, what is it? SOG contest giveaway. That's yes, the hashtag. Contest, yes. We are, uh, again, we, of course, we appreciate everyone's support and love, and this is our way of giving back to you guys. So, you know, uh, I guess, you know, the, with the rate and review stuff. And like I said, better than Scott it really Snyder. doesn't get better than that. If anyone's ever been to a con and waited on a Scott Snyder line for, <laughs> for a signature, you know how long you wait. Yep. So, uh, 
So this is that you don't have to wait for this. You just need to participate and possibly you'll possibly win. So the reason, the main reason Pete and I are here tonight is to discuss the news of the day, really, which um, we are going to bring some people on to help us discuss this. So, but first we'll set it up. Um, so we got word earlier today that H that Warner Brothers is going to do a hybrid release of all their films next year. So it's going to be not only will we will we be able to see them um, in theaters, you will also they will also be pushed to HBO Max the same day and you can watch them from your home. So I've been vocal about my feelings about this for the whole time. I don't like it. I think it's kind of a um, it's kind of like the the axe on the head of movie theaters, in my opinion. Uh, because I can't see how, if this works well, I cannot see how this, um, how they go back to splitting profits with the theaters, with their films. Like if you can just stream everything to HBO Max, you can promote it on HBO Max, you can still do all your marketing and stuff, all the movies coming out, whatever, whatever. But um, all those profits will be yours now. There's no splitting of any of it. There's no splitting of the box office, nothing. Um, so I think that this is the first step in the eventual demise of theaters. We might get blockbusters still in theaters, but I think this is the, the initial first, um, step into the end of the, the movie theater experience. Now, AMC to their credit released, uh, came back with an article a little bit afterwards saying that they, um, they don't agree with this and they are in negotiations with Warner Brothers right now to try and either stop it or change it. I don't know what they're going to come, what decision they're going to come to, but it's kind of, um, I, first of all, I commend them for doing that because they understand the business. They, they probably feel the way I do. And uh, I don't know. I, as everyone who's listened to our podcast or seen me on um, Iceberg Lounge or Straight Outta Gotham Tonight, or even other podcasts I've been on that I've discussed uh, I have sp spoken about my disdain for this. One of the podcasts that I did speak on was the uh, Vigilante 1939 when Wonder Woman got pushed. So in that light, I will be introducing right I'll now. This my piece, that's it. Eric just says it once <laughs> and that's it. You know, you'll get your shot, you'll get your I shot. I get no shot. This is Eric's show. <laughs> I, just, I came here, I showed my balls and now I gotta leave. That, that's all this is. No, but so. first, since I was talking about other shows, I was on with these fine gentlemen that you see right here from the Vigilantes. Oh, so we have Nick Zednick, Nick Caruso, and of course, Daddy Batman himself. What's up, gentlemen? So. Zednick is staring at my balls. <laughs> <laughs> Gail, honey, can, can I talk about Wonder Woman? Uh, <laughs> what? I can't? What? Wow. Oh, oh, man. I'm on the couch tonight, guys. Oh, shoot. <laughs> All right. All right. So, Pete, go ahead. Really quick. Uh, no, I just look, I just think this is just a product of the time we're in. I don't think theaters are going away. I don't think movies are dying. Uh, I'm on the total opposite end of the spectrum. I just I what else do you want them to do? These movies have to come out. Um, you know, there's definitely a, there's I feel like there's way more money in, in releasing them in theaters when, uh, you know, people are safe and when they're able to go, you know, uh, because, you know, you got to buy four movie tickets. You know, a household can pay for one movie. And uh, I just feel like it's just. It's just the, the times are in. That's all it is. Like, I, I don't think movies are going to go away. That's like saying sports are going to go away. You know, the, the NBA can't be contained in a bubble forever. It was nice for a couple of days just to get, you know, the sport back in the action, back in action, the same thing with the NHL, but they cannot just, it, it's unsustainable to do it this way. I just don't think, I know everyone thinks, and look, I think AT&T is evil as is because of what they're going to probably do with DC comics, but that's a whole nother <laughs> story. But I, I, I just think this makes sense. What else do you want them to do? You want them to hold on to these movies until 2022? And also just be happy that the Batman's been pushed to 2022 and we don't have to deal with this. So uh, that's a whole nother thing. But I just, I don't think this is the end. People will go to the movies. People will go out. People want to be out. It, you have to fight people to, to stay in to begin with right now. I just, as soon as vaccines are available and people are taking them and, you know, the world clears up, we'll be back out in the theaters. We'll be back out in the public. And that's really what this means. Well, uh, Daddy Bats, I just saw a tweet that you responded to somebody because I think it was me, it might have been Mark Hughes from was, Forbes yeah. who, who tweeted about the sports angle and you had a good response to that. So, yeah, because Mark said, you know, people go to, you know, they watch sporting events at home, but those are live events, right? 
those are like when you when you go to a sporting event or a concert, you can't watch that again. You're there for the live mm-hmm. atmosphere of it. The movies are different. You can see the movie any night you want, anytime you want. So I don't I don't see that. And I agree with Pete. I think that um this is a product of the times. And let's be honest, they're using it to get millions and millions of subscribers to HBO Max. Oh, yeah, it's a total and, and their goal is is to really obviously trump that up and when things get relatively back to normal i think they're going to hang on to a lot of those subscribers because i do think people will return to the theaters we're human beings you know we're resilient and we forget we have a short memory even of this horrible horrible year that we're going through once it starts to open up you know how we are we're gonna we're gonna come back in droves and especially you guys you know so um I don't think it's all doom and gloom, but I will say this, the theaters are going to have to get creative and uh, they're going to have to evolve a little bit here over the next six to nine months here. They're going to have to fight a little bit for some business, but I think they were going to have to do that anyway. So they can start by discounting concession prices. (laughs) That's 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 a good start, Pete. Or they're going to have to raise them. (laughs) <laughs> uh, that just means I'm going back to CVS for my for my candy. Yeah, sneak them in. <laughs> Better pizza. So, there you go. So Nick, uh, really quick, um, Zednick. Sorry, Nick Zednick. Ooh, uh, <laughs> we've heard we haven't heard anything about the price pricing module with HBO Max. Now we mm-hmm. did. They did say that they're getting rid of their seven day free trial. Um, so they're getting rid of that, but they haven't mm-hmm. changed it. Do you think we're going to see a difference in the price mo- pricing model? Do you think we're going to have to maybe say pay a monthly plus extra for these films or what do you think they're going to, was going to happen eventually? I think, well, first see, it, it sucks for, for most people because I'm sure they were just waiting to cash in on like that seven day free trial. And then they were probably going to jump after Wonder woman or, Zack Snyder's Justice League, whichever one you were going to choose to jump on it. But now I think, I feel like they're just going to keep the $15 because it didn't work with Mulan. So that's why I think it's going to work with Wonder Woman. I think they're going to get you just just enough to subscribe because the library is so big, right? Like, I mean, you can jump off at any time, but kind of just like Patty Jenkins said, it's like they have so much on there that just to like stay for one film and then say I'm out of here is kind of really pointless. So I I feel like they're just going to keep it at the $15, to be honest. And I think logistically it's smart. Okay. The movie's only there for a month. Like, they get pulled after a month. So, like, yeah. they're mm-hmm. going to be there forever. That's a great point. So I, on your guys' show, when uh, when I said that I was not going to watch it on HBO Max and I was going to go to the theater. Stop lying, Eric. Uh, you <laughs> talking about 22 game, days he? left, 21 days. Stop no, lying. I still plan on seeing it in the theaters first. First, again, first. I still plan on seeing the theaters first. So um, just really quickly, Nico, from what you know of their slate coming up, are there any that movies that you uh, are happy now that you don't have to go out and see go to the theaters for like you wouldn't want to spend the money on maybe to go to the theater that you, you know so so yes and no so as he knows and as he knows I'm a big theater guy um when we were able to go here um I I went three times twice with Zeddy down there for uh reviews for the let's go podcast um it, it's 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 frustrating because I will always pick the theater I always will um, but because they're not really open here, uh, Wonder Woman, I was all down to stream just cause I want it, but yeah, there's a lot. I'm happy. I won't have to pay for, <laughs> um, just because now 2021 so loaded now, mm-hmm. especially with everything they're putting out there. So like the four largest ones, which I would have seen. And usually when I see one, I see it multiple times. So you got well, Wonder Woman, you got Godzilla vs. Kong, yeah, baby. Suicide Squad and Dune. And those are just the big yeah. floor four. but I'm also um, excited to see Judas and the black Messiah coming out. There's probably going to be two Academy Award nominations in there with uh, Lakeith Stanfield and Daniel Kalua. And that was one that was struggling to come out. They were really trying to hold on to a theatrical window for that. But I'm glad they submitted it now, not only so I could see it, but so those two can be players in award season because I like how the Oscars are really the main award show right now. I mean, the Emmys kind of did it, but the Oscars are the main award show right now that are really pushing for diversity and inclusion. And I really want to see that representation. So this gives them the opportunity. 
Um, but yeah, it's pretty much those four, uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. And then, you know, I, I used to love Tom, uh, Tom and Jerry when I was a kid. Oh, that looks so even awesome, though though. the trailer for yeah, the live yeah. action one kind of looks blah, <laughs> the fact that I could just really, you're not into it. I think it looks cool. Yeah. I, I, don't I know am why do you too. Say that? It's, it's nice. just, it's just the whole human slash animated thing. Like, so I wish did it was you not just, like Sonic. I wish it was just, I actually did like Sonic yeah. a lot. Um, and, and I still don't under, I mean, the original animation of it looked blah, but I'm, I'm happy that Sonic was the surprise it was for people to be, yeah, I'm, I'm looking to watch all those and I've never seen the matrix ever, but now being able Wait, to stream what? any of them matrix for never, what never are you, 12. How old is this? Never, kid? <laughs> never, never, <laughs> Twice that never. I, oh it was God. never something. It was never something that like caught my attention, but yeah. now that I could stream four, I might just have to catch up. Yeah. 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 As a sci-fi guy, that surprised me because I know yeah. science yeah. fiction. So I'm shocked. Everyone yeah. tells me in that. the Sopranos movie, right? What is it? The, the, uh, the, the that's Saints, coming. Uh, the prequel. Saints of Newark. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Something sure. in Newark. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. on there. I the the one that, that really bums me out is Kong vs. Godzilla. Like I wasn't yeah. a huge fan of the last one story wise, but the monsters yeah. look cool. And I just I would have loved to yeah. seen that in like I don't know, RPX or something. Well, there's someone right now who uh, I'm going to bring in who won't have access to these films oh, in 2021 yeah. right now because oh, he wow. lives in Canada. So oh. I'm going to be bringing in Carlos from the Nerd Room. There he is. Mr. Hey, hey. Carlos. Hey, Hello, Carlos. sir. How you What's doing? What's going on, buddy? How are you? It's still connecting apparently, but he'll, be, he'll connect shortly and hopefully can hear us. It's that Rogers internet over there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> there he is. He's here now. What's up, sir? How are you? I am good. How are you guys? Hold on. Very, very good. Right in there. Yeah. No, thanks for having me on tonight. Definitely. Yeah, dude, definitely. anytime we can get that bat suit on a show. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. I had to change my orientation. We got like Christmas Central going on down here. So. I know. Can't you tell I got the beard going? I know, man. It, it's <laughs> awesome. We're going to need you to come and deliver all these gifts to all the good little girls and boys just, up in Canada. <laughs> I, I, I got the belly. I just need the suit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> We'll squeeze you into this one, man. Hey, oh. That's not happening. Oh, he would love that, though. <laughs> that's right? more like a Nico. That looks like an extra media. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <laughs> oh. So, yeah, Carlos, we were, we were talking about the news, obviously, of the HBO Max, uh, the hybrid release for the Warner Brothers slate of films next year. And as a Canadian right now, you don't have access to mm. that. No, so, we do not. So how? what are your feelings about this? Because uh, I know the virus is, is pretty bad up there too right now so what are your feelings about it number one and how long do you think until we get word that hbo max will be in canada because i'm pretty sure they're gonna want that market as well and other yeah. places outside the united states so yeah no doubt as far as my feelings go uh yeah it, it's been a rough one and i know that a lot of it stemmed from the existing licensing deals internationally hmm. and it kind of the word from folks that i talked to that have feelers out in the industry was that AT&T wasn't overly happy with the launch of HBO Max because their expectation was that Warner Brothers would go forward to all the different international markets and work out deals to get all their product under the HBO Max umbrella. Kind of like what Disney did, like a few spots like uh, India, I know had an issue with Disney's content and they actually teamed up with Hotstar which is owned by Sony, which must have been a pretty bitter pill for Disney to swallow. But they're like, yeah. we need to just get Disney Plus in these areas. And so when you saw all those, uh, like all the chair shift with uh, HBO and with Warner Brothers Pictures and whatnot, that was kind of a direct result of the lack of um, enthusiasm AT&T had with how they had implemented it. Because they kind of walked into it and said, well, we'll just kind of work this thing the way we have traditionally with signing licensing deals so up here a lot of the hbo content falls under crave which is run by bell canada which is it's an awesome service because it doesn't cost me much and i get a bunch of premium content off of hbo max but i didn't get to see the witches wonder woman they said isn't coming to it so mm. i'm in a position where i'm gonna have to go to the theater and like kudos to the exhibitors up here. Like I went and saw Tenant. I saw Batman 89 when they did the re-release on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, 
man, the theaters did an amazing job up here. Like the kids were out with like their proton packs, like hosing these, <laughs> sh- hosing these chairs down. And it's like, you came to the door, you had to have a mask on, you had to sanitize. They're only allowed two people at the concession at a time. And like, it's manageable because it's Batman 89 or <laughs> like tenant kind of thing. And uh, it, it'll be curious to see what uh, happens when we have a big high draw movie come out like a Wonder Woman in the theaters. But uh Got to do what I got to do, man. I married to the married to the girl I am. I got no choice in going to see Wonder Woman. Uh, <laughs> Boxing Day, Jesus' birthday took precedence, but uh, yeah. Okay, I, wait, I think... hold on, hold on. What is Boxing Day? Yeah, what is like it? I learned most of my history of Canada from South Park, so like I know nothing. <laughs> oh man, yeah, Boxing Day. It's it's the day after Christmas because uh, our forefathers knew that everybody eats and drinks way too much Christmas Day, and you wake up in the morning with a big mess and nobody needs to go to work so wow it's a okay. it's a it's a stat holiday up here that's yeah. amazing good boxing for you guys. day yeah you, you guys ace that one yeah you put all your crap back in boxes and uh and off you go <laughs> it's like new year's day over here oh. yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so wow that's, so that uh, that's interesting i'm gonna that's gonna be interesting to watch that unfold i mean obviously here you know people say americans are just ignorant to anything that's not american so which is 100 <laughs> true right so we're, we're not much, yeah. in this regard we're like hey we could do it we're fine you know yeah. who, who cares about anyone else but it's gonna be interesting to see how this unfolds because again um you know it can only help them i don't know why they haven't done this already like why this isn't hammered out and figured out already is a little shocking to me that that at and would launch this platform and it's only an American platform. And like, yeah, I, it, man. you know, it bonkers. I don't know what's going on. Carlos, did you say you don't have Disney plus up there either? No, no, we have Disney plus. Okay. Added, I was going to yeah. say, I was like, what the hell are they doing over there? Like, everyone's striking out. Well, and that's the thing. It's like most of the, like, honestly, Warner brothers is consistently like my whole life. Ever since I discovered the company in the days of like the lead up to Batman 89, mm-hmm. we've always been left out in the cold and it's like, why we're like literally right next door it's easier for you to do business with us than uh the uk or anybody else but uh yeah it's it just always been weird but like disney everything we get day and date everybody really even the movie releases right like our box office counts towards the domestic tallies type of thing so i don't know like i know that it was the licensing agreement with bell that led to a bit of the the obtuseness with the rollout here mm. um Cause you would have thought that we'd be the no brainer for testing out international marketplaces, but uh, yeah, huh. we'll see what happens. Strange. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, that's going to be an interesting watch. So now uh, speaking of Disney plus uh, when we got word of wonder woman, everyone automatically assumed black widow would be coming next. <laughs> and we still haven't heard anything about black widow. So uh, I just, I'm going to ask each of you, I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. So I'm going to ask each of you what the date you think will get word about when this is that when will will Black Widow will be announced. So let Pete, you first give a give a quick I, guess. I mean, I think I think we'll see it by March. You know, I don't know when they're going to announce it because I feel like Disney's really slacking when it comes to this stuff. And just in general, like, you know, it's it's weird because like, you know, it's been really DC heavy. Whereas the Marvel stuff's been really few and far between. Like, it's true. I feel like we hear more Marvel scuttlebutt than official sources. And, you know, like the Alfred Molina back is like Doc Ock would have broke the internet if it was like a press release or something. Yeah. But because it was kind of released by scoopers and stuff, people kind of treaded lightly. Right. So it, it, I, I don't know really why Disney is playing everything so close to the chest. So I, I just, I think you'll see it around sometime in March. I just feel like that'll be, you know, that'll, that'll happen. Cause traditionally, right. Like the, the Hollywood is on a break from now until new year's. Mm. So right now we, we usually don't see anything until the new year. So I think, you know, sometime around March, you'll probably get an announcement sometime in late January, I believe. Zeddy, what about you? Earlier or later? You know, it's actually, you, you, uh, if there's anybody noticing, I'm actually in a theater. Right I now. see that. Or, or, yeah, we know, are watching me. You must be the This is so cool. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm actually going to say we're going to see it in May because okay. I think Zack Snyder's Justice League is taking the spot of March. And I think Black Widow is going to be the answer to it. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. Yep. The other two Knicks. Well, there. I, I think there's something on December 10th, right? Isn't there a Disney um, the shareholders? Day. The yeah. investors did. Yes, there is. That's true. So I would think that on December 10th, we're going to get an announcement of what 
what they're planning, what they're going to do. I happen to agree with SETI. I think, I don't think they want to compete with Zack Snyder's justice league. So I think it could be as early as February or maybe closer, maybe sometime in April, but I think they're going to make that announcement on the 10th. Okay. I think we're only a few days away from that. That's fair. Nico. It's, it's going to come the day after wonder woman leaves HBO max. They're oh. going to try to pick up right where it leaves off. So the end of January. They're going to try to pick up mm. end of January. They're going to try to pick up right where it leaves off because Zeddy said something and 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 mm. and you said something which I would like to think, but I don't think Disney gives a damn about mm. Zack Snyder's Justice League. And I <laughs> yeah. think they're looking, <laughs> I think you know, right. they buried one Zack Snyder movie with Civil War once. They buried exactly. Justice League with Ragnarok, and I think they're going to try to bury Snyder's JL with Black Widow because also, I mean, Black Widow's been ready since May. Good I mean, Lord. it's been yeah. ready forever yeah. since before right. Wonder Woman. So I right. think they want to get that out. And you know what? Let Gal and ScarJo and Florence Pugh dominate the first two months of 2021. Hell, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I don't think anyone would complain about that. No, and Carlos. Complaining. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm going to build on what Pete said and I hope I don't get kicked off our show, but I think like DC has been like since the summer, um, kind of the dominant comic book set of characters in the pop culture zeitgeist. And I think at that investors day on the 10th, they'll announce that it's coming out. I'm going to say January 25th because kind of like what Nico was saying, Mm -hmm. they're going to give one room in that month. And then, at the end of that month, you got to remember Wonder Woman comes off HBO Max. So right. what a better way to get yep. eyeballs back to your stream or attention mm-hmm. back on your IP than to, hey, we got Black Widow. It's ready to go. Quite frankly, I, I've been beating the drum that that thing was coming to Disney Plus for a while. I yeah. think the Wonder Woman Nothing else can come out unless it does. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the other thing. It complicated the whole MCU. So. <laughs> right. That's a damn your connected universe. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, well, gotta, you literally have three series that are just waiting in the pipeline to come I know. Out. I, I have know. a question for y'all. Just because I, I, I just thought of something uh, Kevin Feige said. Like, he said. Kevin Feige. I said it right. Okay. You just said it wrong. Um, oh, Kevin. They uh, said, you know, all these shows and stuff will kind of depend on each other in yeah. order. I mean, what? I probably not. But what are the chances that they announce on the 10th that Black Widow's coming on Christmas as well? <laughs> oh, my God. That would be. I mean, can you see them? No. Because Warner Brothers has been so, so aggressive. It was there. They do have Soul coming out. You're yeah. right. But. I don't know. They have like Warner brothers made such a statement today. Like if I'm Disney, I want to swing back as hard and as dirty as possible. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. I I'm don't with know. Nico, man. Like yeah. I'd never underestimate Disney's ability to be never. dicks. So yeah. <laughs> I, I could, I, that is like, I, I would be upset, but I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> and, and they have such an earned yeah. audience that they literally could say, actually it's coming out today. And they would, Everyone wow. buying, yeah. yeah, they're thieves though. They, they, they steal they, everything from the DC. Content, man. <laughs> It'd they're be them, like a man. con at the end. <laughs> Look, oh my god, not a trailer, yeah. it's the actual movie. It's the movie <laughs> that'd be Wonder great. Woman oh, versus Black Widow, who's gonna yeah. win? That would be so gags. That's true. I mean, that's a good, yeah, it would be baller. What do you yeah. want to watch more? That would be, yes, that the one that's be... no longer in the universe or the one that is. Yeah, well, she's just dead. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> she's just dead. She's just she's like just Jason Todd. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's like Jason. Do you, do you yeah. want the prequel to the sequel or do you want the one that's uh you know, yeah. the prequel yeah. to the sequel? But yeah. you won't understand why Florence Pugh is all of a sudden one or Black Widow if you don't watch this. Yeah, yeah you it's have to just, watch it. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What it's about one? Does it tie in? It doesn't it's tie into WandaVision at all. That's well, it before, right? I don't know. Yeah. Because okay. January 15th. Yeah. WandaVision apparently takes takes place in a lot of different. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And you're so, not gonna know why Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man shows up in Falcon in the Winter Soldier unless you watch that. So. <laughs> He's Ben Riley. What do you mean? He's gonna play yeah. Ben Riley. Oh, here okay. we go. Going oh, off on a tangent. Go ahead. I just what dropped what a Nico. Tri- what tree are you him bought? Him as Scarlet there, Spidey, though, would be tight, Pete. Yeah. Him as Scarlet yeah. Spidey. Oh, Spider Man Noir, man. Get here. He can do it. Right? Spider Man Noir. Let's go. Bring the cage yeah. back. Let's do it. Come I on. mean, I pe- I see people, a lot of people today 
saying that uh, Disney Plus is, is HBO Max's direct competition, which I don't believe at all. No. Uh, not yet, anyway. That's yet. why I, they're doing this, I think. Yeah. I still think Netflix is the top dog. And everyone's yeah, coming after it is. Them. It is. But yeah. I think things change when The Office goes to Peacock. You know, I think the, yeah. I think yeah. the Office is a big part of that. Yeah, so I people keep bringing that up, and I'm like, come on, guys, no. I mean, The Mandalorian alone brings, people, like, brings yeah. so many people to Disney Plus, and I mean, everyone loves Disney movies, the, especially the old ones and the cartoon, mm. you know, the old cartoon movies and the Pixar stuff, and all of that stuff is there. So um, I was, I've been surprised at the lack of subscription to HBO Max. I, um, I mean, obviously, I love the DC content, but I love all of most of HBO shows too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the fact that where they've been having a hard time selling this when it's literally all of it in one place, like you don't have to go all over the place to look for this stuff anymore. Everything is there. It's, I've also read that a lot of current HBO subscribers don't haven't activated HBO Max yet. And that's really interesting to me, because like you said, it's it's kind of like a one stop shop. It's a hub of a lot of content. Now, um, I don't subscribe to HBO. Does anyone weird. here subscribe to HBO? Yeah. So yeah. do you guys it's part of my you, cable bill? So. Do, you, yeah. do any of you? Yeah, I don't. I, that's an extra channel for Fios. I don't get it. Um, so, the, so is it included in your price? No. Like in your, no, it's not. It's extra. No. Right. Exactly. Extra. But you have to convert, though. See, like what Pete's saying is that we had to set up. Right. We HBO actually Max. I actually got rid of it on Comcast here and went and did it because they had a nice promo going on. That's why we did it. Oh, I um, but there's a lot of people, like Pete says. I think there's like millions of people that have HBO, but they, they just didn't don't convert over to HBO Max, which is well, ridiculous. Well, they massively flubbed on the launch they, of that because mm-hmm. if you have HBO, you have HBO Go. Go. Right. When HBO Max yeah. launched, HBO Now and both and HBO Go still existed. Mm-hmm. So pretty much you're you're just watching the shows that were out at the time. You can go back and watch your game of Thrones, your Sopranos, your entourages. And then like when HBO max dropped, there was nothing to get you over. So Mm -hmm. we did it just to have it because you know, we were holding out hope that Zack Snyder's justice league was going to happen one day. (laughs) And it did look at our investment, but, um, and then I think so many people were just like, okay, what's the difference? I have this, I have their channel and then, I mean, I'm I'm gonna take what Justin Kowalski says. I'm giving him credit for it. Is I think don't do that. Don't do that. I think the <laughs> HP. Well, no, I'm fine. I'm giving him credit for it. I think he's right when he said like. HBO just carries such like an adult. It's such a specific oh, yeah. title. That Even their animated shows are adult exactly. oriented. Like South- right, hundred percent. So like HBO people Max. see HBO Max and they just think Thrones. They just think Sopranos. Yeah. And even with all the other stuff worked in, and there's not really. I know yeah. some people say that there's a massive kids section if you go looking, but I don't think they marketed it enough to where people would go look. I think yeah, they go, oh, that's, fair. that's like the grown up Disney Plus. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kind but of, you know what? The, Real Disney quick, Dark. The rollout <laughs> was ter- the rollout was terrible because I had called Comcast about a week before it was coming out. And I said, Oh, it was so funny. We have HBO. I go, is it going to be converted to HBO max? And they're like, Oh, we don't, we don't know. We can't help you with that. (laughs) I called a day later and I'm like, I have HBO. This HBO max is coming. And they're like, yeah, there's nothing in the notes here. So what did I do? I said, I went online on my iPad. I canceled HBO with Comcast and I just independently. So I think a lot of people, it's just been a cluster. It was, it was a real bad rollout. I yeah. got, I've got a, a, a like a fourth generation Apple TV, so I was able to download HBO Max the app. But in my mm-hmm. first generation Apple TV, HBO Go, which what is what I use for you know streaming, mm-hmm. just, just disappeared. And because that Apple TV is so old, uh, it still functions great and still works, but I can't download apps to it. Now I don't have HBO on that machine, and that's a primary machine. It's so weird watching these balls jiggle as I talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. As long as they're, as long as they're here. Man. As long as you're talking about up here. It's good. like hypnotizing Pete. I, I, <laughs> it is. I, like, I just want to hypnotize Zednik. That's it. You know, he Please. loves sharing pictures. But looking like um, Davy Jones out here, man. <laughs> yeah, Davy Jones. Nico got that. But yeah, so like losing HBO Go on my first generation Apple TV is a bummer. But sure. You know, like I said, like it's in my cable subscription, so I do have access to it. But I, I just think a lot of, you know, because it is an older audience. I, I don't know if the, you know, the older generation is as, uh, you know, keen to downloading apps and such. And I just don't think they know no. what to do, to be honest. Yeah, I've heard no. so many stories of people going to their parents' house and being like, why are you still using the old HBO Now or HBO Go yeah, app? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's like you just download the new app and put your 
existing mm-hmm. credentials in and then it's, mm-hmm. you get all this new content that you've been paying for but you just haven't accessed right mm-hmm. like i think there's tons of stories and i think maybe warner overcompensated for that audience instead of kind of forcing them to just one day try and get into hbo now it doesn't work and then you have to download that app right so yeah also yeah. i don't i don't think the name does them any favors and the fact that like you know, HBO is, itself is recognizable. The Max mm-hmm. part, it, it took me a while to realize, oh, this is HBO plus Cinemax. You know, like, yeah. I, I, but, but what this, I'm, <laughs> Cinemax is known for like softcore adult entertainment. So like, it's yeah. just weird to me that they want to kind of yeah. be associated with that. It's like, it's kind of like a premium movie channel yeah. plus like late night uh, entertainment such as that. So for like yeah. 35 years, it's been known. Yeah. It's been known I, for I, I, I learned that the hard you know, way. Like, it's still a living with thing. my parents. Hey man, how are you? How else are you going to distinguish yourself from Disney unless you have, <laughs> unless you have that soft core content? Dude, Disney's the you company know. that put the penis on top on the cover of Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid, so. that's true. <laughs> that is true. That's a very you know, good point. One, oh, one no. thing too that I just forgot about until now. Another way that HBO Max flubbed mm. too is they didn't cut deals with Amazon Fire Stick or Roku either. And Amazon yeah. just happened, and they mm-hmm. keep yeah, saying that, that Roku's yeah. going to happen, but it's not. And a lot a lot of people, especially if you think of like college campuses, they use a lot of campuses will use those two things as their yeah. way to get TV yeah. for the ones mm. you can't afford, like in Apple TV or such. And um, like Wonder Woman kind of pushed all that too. Like it when did. Yeah. It did. It was yep. kind of the, 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 the moving force. So the other yeah, one, yeah. The other one for me is like, they didn't get on the Xbox and PlayStation five mm. launches, right? Yeah. You get that HBO max button on the remote. It's game yeah, over, right? That's a good I thought HBO too. Max was ju- yeah. just reached the PlayStation uh side of things. Well, yeah. I have it I have it on Xbox, my Xbox One. Okay. Um, but I think it might have been a good uh marketing tool for them to include it with the launch of both of them, right? Oh, like dude. have have some kind of tie into those because obviously those are the two biggest toys or get video, whatever you want to call them for this Christmas season. It's those two consoles. It, it, to me, so. it almost feels like not necessarily like they were dragging their feet, but they just weren't expecting the world to shut down for a little bit and everyone to be home and kind of stuck yeah. in front of their TVs. So now that yeah. we, are, we kind of take more notice of this, whereas you know before we were able to be distracted by other venues of entertainment. So I think that also plays a factor into mm-hmm. why we, you know, we are kind of very critical right now. Cause it's like, well, I'm home. I want to watch all this stuff. Why don't, why aren't you guys ready? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good that's point. That's very true. Man. But they're making up for it now. Right. Oh uh, yeah. They're, they're definitely <laughs> rushing to the finish line. They're trying to catch up, man. Let me they're tell trying you. so hard. Yeah. yeah. It's like Rocky three, man. You, you have to get beat down and then. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh Rocky boy. Three, man. Yeah. Go to Harlem and start training and off you go. <laughs> Yeah, baby. I think I saw that talk about movie theaters. I think I saw that like six times Make when it came it. out. Rocky, Rocky three. Oh, Rocky three. I saw them all. I've seen. I I, know. But when Rocky three came uh, out, I, I think I was like seventeen, and I just thought, I thought that movie was like. <laughs> I think I hate I mean, my son saying, but I thought I could walk through walls after I saw that. Yeah, movie. Run through walls. There's run nothing through like walls. a good Rocky montage to get you motivated to be brutally honest. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's true. Yeah. Well, well, the eye of the tiger. The yeah, eye of the tiger. Just just to, like, you know, run through the snow and pound like carcasses of meat. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah. No doubt, it gets that blood pumping. Like yeah, where does those... Nico's birthday fall in respect to the release of a Rocky movie? Is it kind of like a, <laughs> right. nine months between when one of those films dropped? And uh... gotta be it. Oh my god, <laughs> that's hysterical. Oh, that's All right, amazing. so I want to play. I want to play a little bit of a game here. I am mm. going to. Oh. The, obviously, we know there's a slate coming out for next year, the the Warner Brothers slate. So I'm gonna name a movie, and I want well, you guys. The Batman is coming. I right, come on, we know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna. <laughs> I want to know if you if if it's gonna be a, a theater for you or the couch. All right, but I'm in a theater, so th- does it count for me? <laughs> okay, calm down. <laughs> There's more people in the theater to watch Zednik than there are for Wonder Woman. <laughs> <Yeah, look. laughs> All right, so Pete, I will. I'm a bigger with... jaw than Batman. I will start with you, Pete, and I will start with ah this one because you mentioned it already. Godzilla vs Kong, theater or couch? Couch, couch. Zednik, couch, couch. Carlos, theater. And not just because I have to right now. Right, right. <laughs> Nico, I'm gonna say theater if I can because I, I just want to see s- stuff explode in front of me. Large, <laughs> awful. Yeah, <laughs> if, if I if I can't theater, I, I I've 
you know, I'm a Godzilla fan. I love that stuff. I mean, um, I didn't like the last one either, though. But that was there was so much carnage and destruction. Yeah, but it was cool. Yeah, it was. But I, I would like to see that on cool. the big screen. So Moth. if we yeah. can't. Even myself, who did not like, I like the monsters of both in both films. Like the stories mm-hmm. were lacking a little bit for me, but I actually like that. And I think that's why you go to see those movies is to mm-hmm. see the monsters, right? That's so right. I, for me, also it would be theater. I, I, would I enjoyed the destruction money. of Fenway Park. That was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As did that's I. Great. As did I. I. I also did. So okay. So I will start this time with Carlos. I don't know if you're a big horror fan, but The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, theater oh. or couch? Man. That thing is not getting watched in my house. <laughs> so my kid is into those movies, but those, uh, yeah, those type of movies, they don't, uh, they don't fly with this homeboy. I don't sleep for weeks. So, so you're not going at all. Okay. That's, that's, that you're not doing either. That's fine. No. Nope. Nick. I made the illustrious mistake of seeing that opening night, the first one, and I actually bought a nightlight at 16 years old. So I am personally, I will, I will watch it on my couch. You could have Pete's beard. With the last <laughs> His balls keep hypnotizing me. I don't know what I'm doing right now. Uh, that's not the first time he's told me that. <laughs> he's not calling you the man hatter. <laughs> Daddy bets. Um, I'm like Carlos. I I'm not into exorcism. Guy? Not only will I not go to the theater, I won't even see it on the couch. That That's a pass for me. Yeah, man. Yeah, I like horror movies, but I like vampires and werewolves. Right. and all. I don't I don't get into that devil. I don't like that stuff. <laughs> I'll go to Pete because Nico has to gather yeah, himself. I, for I, I, Nico, are, are you alive right now, man? <laughs> <laughs> for uh, me, I'm a huge Conjuring fan. I love all the movies, including The Nun. So, like, uh, it, it kills me. But, I, I mean, I'll <laughs> see it on the couch. But, I mean, all lights off. Yeah. Like, Jesus! <laughs> I, I can't wait. I, I love it. I, I'm I'm more than happy to watch that film uh, sitting on my couch. <laughs> okay, Nico. Yeah, if, if you um, can. love. I love horror. Uh, Just stare at Pete, not, Nico. I don't love. I don't love. No, can't do that. Um, <laughs> love. Uh, I I don't historically love horror, but I really love the way that the modern horror films are. But I am going to do couch because, assuming the world's a little bit more safer to watch a horror film with a small group is very fun very oh, fun boy. so I- i'm going couch well i'm going to pick theater and i'll explain this when i went what is the I release th- date though yeah do I we know that i'm not sure i think it's the that summer. also plays a factor like mm-hmm. if it's like, in the year, no it's let's just we'll chance. just go as, just as just far so, as things right now yeah. right we'll mm-hmm. just keep it there but the reason sure. i say theater for this is because i saw i think it was paranormal activity three in the theater the one with the mm-hmm. two little girls and yeah three um and the amount of fun I had in the it theater with the people freaking out near me. Oh, yeah. Every time now I want to go see a horror movie the first time, I got to go to the theater because I'm like, I, the, the atmosphere is what you go for with those. So that would be theater for me as well. Screen uh, five, I might break my rule and go to a theater because I know that's got a <laughs> decent sized following. So, yeah. Okay. So. I think I know what everyone's going to say on this one, but I'll throw it out there anyway. Space Jam, a new legacy with LeBron James. Zednik. With all due respect, couch. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all going to couch this one. Carlos. Oh, uh, you know what? My kid is a huge Space Jam fan, so it won't be a full family affair, but I got to take her to see it in the theater. So that'll be a theater okay. for us. Yeah. All right. Okay. Pete. I'm going to go watch it at the Staples Center. <laughs> so I'm just going to go out to LA and hang out with LBJ and Anthony Davis and watch it in the arena. Nico. Um, so I, I changed my mind. I no longer like horror films, so I'm not going to watch it at all. <laughs> I, that's oh, mean. That's wow. nonsense. I'm assuming Whoa. you would, you might that pass nonsense. on it or couch it as well. I would have couched it. If it's yeah. not MJ, I'm not watching it. Right. Okay. We're from oh, Chicago. Guys. Yeah, I mean, you know, I got guys. We're from Chicago. Come I got on. that chip on my shoulder. I, <laughs> I, I don't root for LeBron. He's a wonderful guy, and he's arguably the second best basketball player <laughs> of all time. But I'm not going to lie to you guys. I have that insecurity where <laughs> I just everything to me is Michael Jordan. I, I, I that was right in my prime. Yeah, so can't watch it. Yeah, even I'm not even a, gonna watch it. Yeah. No, even as a Nick fan, Jordan beat me so many times. But even as a Knicks fan, I I what agree. What if MJ has like a cameo? Like <laughs> he's better, he's better. Post credit yeah. cameo. I would not see. I wouldn't go see that in the theater as well. No, um, I'm not. I don't even know if I'll watch it 
uh, like on HBO Max. I might watch it in a couple of years when it comes out on a regular HBO or whatever, whenever that comes out. So, all right. The uh, next one I'm going to bring up is a musical. It is a remake of Lin-Manuel Miranda's Tony winning Broadway in the Broadway musical in the Heights. So I don't know who we, we, I'm going to find out about you guys now who's into musicals and who's not. So I will start with Carlos. Go ahead. Uh, you know what? That's a, that's a couch for me. Couch. I got a okay. musical theater kid, but, uh, yeah, I'm not paying a hundred bucks to take the family. Though. <laughs> <laughs> understandable, understandable. Uh, Daddy Bats. I think that's a couch thing because I probably won't watch it, but Nick will have it on and I'll walk by <laughs> and, then, and I'll wind up sitting down because I'm a big music guy. And right, the yeah. next thing I know, we're two hours into it, maybe we're drinking some bourbon and whatever. And... <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nico, you can answer now. <laughs> um... <laughs> probably just couch because uh, i think you could have some more i mean like i said the depending on the state of the world i think i'm still going to do couch even though i'm very excited to see that because anthony ramos is the star of it and i think he's on the verge of a breakout so well it's a couch. it's a Lin -Manuel miranda film, well yeah so. well he's in yeah pete uh i'll probably see it on my couch four years from now like, <laughs> it's, it's not on my radar at all yeah. sorry it just city I'm going to say couch, but I've really came around to the genre as of late. Like I, like I didn't see a lot of them in theaters, but like La La Land was one that I like came around to way after the fact. And I really enjoyed it, but I think it's a good comfort couch viewing. Yeah. So yeah, Greatest I agree. Showman was cool. I dug that movie. Out. Yeah. yeah. And the Greatest Showman was good too. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Hey, that was a good movie. Yeah. That was fun. I feel like yeah. the last two musicals I saw were Greatest Showman and, and uh, Sweeney Todd. You know, so <laughs> they're not really, uh, they're not really on my radar. Well, I grew up uh, in a in a large family. Musical theater was big in my family. I've been in a couple plays myself. But having said all that, I still will go to watch this on the couch. Eric is quite the best game. He knows how to tap dance. He he's, athletic he's athletic and he's athletic. He's athletic and a songsman. Yeah. Yes, yeah. he's I, like I, a regular Patrick Swayze. <laughs> Swayze, yeah. hey, dude, Hugh Jackman and Swayze got nothing on the championship. Got the Eric's having the time of his life over there. <laughs> all right, so let me let me. I'll pick one now that's that's near and dear to all of us. Uh, the Suicide Squad, and I will start with Daddy Bat. Out of the theater, of course. Theater. Okay. If we're able to, that's a no-brainer for me. Okay. Nico? Theater. 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 Zednik? I am going to the La Cinema for that okay. one. <laughs> you said the and la. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one right. or the other. <laughs> la Cinema. It is the. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what la means in Italian. La. <laughs> <laughs> said it twice, but go ahead. Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what, what Eric? What? I love you, man. <laughs> well, I can kick you out very quickly. I know. That's all. I was like, wait. Zednik's been pounding out. the water, guys. Forgive him. <laughs> it's all your fault. You're the one that hypnotized me. You don't want to tell me to be evil. <laughs> all right. We're losing here, Carlos. Oh, it's theater for me, for sure. Right, and sure. then probably come home and watch it again right away. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, that, that part yeah. might be cool. That's... I might turn around. And say, wow, you know, this is kind of cool that I can watch it again. That's like the call of the night. Right buddy. That's yeah. the call of the night. That's that's the call of the night. You're yeah. right. I didn't think about that till right now. Thanks, man. Pete, my I'm man. Sure you too. Uh, I, I, you know what? There's a there's a greater chance I see this call. one in the theater just because I believe it's a summer release. Yeah. So I feel like I think things are yeah. be a little bit calmer at that point. But I think there's a good shot to see that one in the theater. Yeah, me too. I mean, everything we've seen about the film mm -hmm. and and the action sequences, you have to see that in the movie theater. I mm -hmm. can't. That's not one I could feel good sitting well, at home. Well, Unless not even just just where we sit vaccine wise. I believe the UK launched out or approved their vaccine mm -hmm. today. So that's going to get sorted out over there. So Tom McClellan, good for you guys. You did it first. <laughs> and, uh, I imagine we're going to follow suit sometime shortly thereafter. But yeah. I imagine by the time that movie hits theaters, you know, I I'll safely have my uh, my injection. The only other place I might go to see it is our good friend Garrett Grev is putting in a 4K projector in his, his house. Yeah. So if Garrett, if I come to see you when the Suicide Squad comes out, maybe we could we could watch that together. That hey, was... what's up, man? Yes. You're... There we go. Look at the bromance. Yeah, there you go. Smile. Man, man. Did you see the smile? The, the best Twitter bromance, baby. I haven't yes. seen Zednik that happy since he sent me some pictures. Although, although me, me and Carlos have, been, have had a nice little rivalry as of late. So. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, oh, quarrel? I'm tried. killing Nico. A little quarrel, I guess. Oh, oh guess. God. I can't, I can't finish the show with Pete. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Do tell. Wait, wait. There's a quarrel? I want to hear about this because I obviously have been. Nixie, what's going on? 
Yeah, what's going oh, on? We're, we're fine. We're fine. <laughs> Just a little trouble in paradise, but no, no worries. All's I'm, good. I'm not sure if even Carlos knows what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I, are you sure you have the right Carlos? I, I know there's I a few do. down south of the border. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh. No, but I mean, this like south of our border. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> Where are south we going? 49. I'm losing control of this. Okay, everyone to your corners. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to need some more brandy. Excuse me. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> you want to go grab it? Go yeah. grab it. No, 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 no. You want me to go oh, grab it? Man. No, no, no. no. Okay, uh, so <laughs> I will put this out there. And uh, I know I'll start with this one. I'm going to do The Matrix 4. I definitely want to see that in the theater. Uh, for the same th- th- reason why I've always wanted to see the Matrix movies in the theater is because of they're just a huge spectacle and you want to that's you know that's a, that's a theatrical experience you want to have. So Pete, Matrix Four. Oh man, ah uh, jeez, it depends. That I'm, I might that might be a theater. That it might should be, be a theater. theater. Yeah, again, just depending <laughs> on the release date. Uh, it, it, you know, I, I, do you, do you happen to know when it is? That's that, that's my main. We're point. going under the assumption that we're still COVID full. <laughs> If we're, co- if we're COVID full, it might be a couch. It's 50 50 <laughs> at this point. It depends. All right. So you're not willing to risk it for, maybe not willing to risk it for this one. Maybe not. No. It also, uh, vintage Wachowskis, maybe I would risk it. But if we're talking like the Speed Racer Wachowskis, I don't know if I'm ready to do that. <laughs> yeah. Good call. That is a good call. Carlos. Man, I've been ride or die with this franchise, and it was kind of one ride and two dies, but <laughs> got got to keep going, man. So uh, yeah, I think it'll be theater. Oh man, me. Reloaded was dope. How do you, how could you not? I mean, visually, it's a, it's an amazing movie. I, yeah, story wise, yeah. it falls off a little bit. But the visually, first two I really like. The third one, eh. I'm with you yeah. on that one. It's yeah. good until like the architect kind of takes all the wind out of the sails at the end of the movie, right? So yeah, kind of. I'm sorry, we're kind of we're kind of spoiling it for Nico since he's never seen it. So we're I don't, you, I don't. It's cool. We're so throwing out terms like, here. The guy from KFC is in charge of the Matrix. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. That's I gotta not be a bad. <laughs> he's probably not into the Matrix because, believe it or not, guys, I have never seen. Really? Well, you when just did, kept that in for when now. When did the Matrix I come out? When, when is the first <laughs> one come out? Uh, 98 or 99. College. Okay, yeah, well, see, at, college, that, so. at that time, I I, op- I was starting my business. It was we, I had the, the restaurant and the club, everything downtown. So, I I mean, I've heard nothing but great things about it, but I got to be honest with you. It's one of those things that I have never sat down and n- no one's ever really coerced me and said, you have to see this. So The first one is must-see. T- is, is, it, is it okay? Yeah. If you love sci-fi, yeah. definitely. Okay. So this is what we'll do. I'll come. I'll come back to you guys in the future. But if we you will. can watch them, we get will. Your hands on them and watch. We will them, because we're going to have a lot of stunt time on our hands over the next month. So for sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So yeah, give them a watch and then let us know what you think. Zednik, have you seen all of them? I have. My dad and I love the Matrix. Okay. Guys, and big Keanu, uh, Keanu Reeves fan as of late. So I'm going to see this in the theater. Right. And yeah. both actually, but in the theater first. I definitely, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. I wasn't when I first heard about it, but now I am. I don't know why. Uh, and he, we'll he do a selling point for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll do one more. Uh, I already, I, I was going to say Dune, but I'm pretty sure we'd all go see that in the theater, right? I'm not going to. Yeah, yeah. HBO no, Max, actually, come on. Actually, for me, that's a total couch experience. I know nothing about Dune. <laughs> I, I know nothing about Dune. Other you than don't have to. You just yeah. go it's Denny. It's I Denny. I don't you either. Go I, I never, I never yeah. saw the first one, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, I, Pete, just, you saw the trailer, right? Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it looks interesting. Sure. You might get some shirtless Momoa, and I know you're a big guy with the shirt. Well, I mean, yeah. Also. If, if I mean, if you, or, yeah. or Timothy Arthur's Chalamet, be in that. <laughs> isn't Mary <laughs> Jane in it too? Zendaya is in it. Oh, Zendaya, it's MJ. not Mary Jane. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> not that Michelle. Mary Jane. <laughs> Michelle. Uh, Michelle. They Michelle. remarketed as her to to sell better and far right, from home. Right, but right. I thought they. Uh, I thought there was some kind of legal thing with that. Am I wrong? I, don't know I th- if I'm not mistaken, I thought like Sony owns the movie right. rights to certain oh, characters. Like they didn't let Could them be. use it, which Carlos, just like makes me mad at this? Marvel for like going bankrupt in '96. Like, oh god, you guys make me furious. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. Th- I don't know that there's any legal things. I think they just tried to switch it up as far yeah, as switch I know. It up. That's well, that's yeah. just a bad probably thing. that seems to be what <laughs> they're doing <laughs> with Spider Man. So that, I, far I, from Spider Man as I like to but say. But I am not. <laughs> oh, not no. Stop. The shade. He really is far from I home. Always, I'm, I am always the lone wolf on this one. Always. And it's not even you, that I... Heidi. 
You the only one? Be... Yeah, I think so. No, there's Carlos. Do you like the the, the Spider Man MCU? Iron Jr. Yeah. You mean? Yeah, you know what? I there's That's a, a no. couple fundamental things That's that I no. dislike, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Overall, have you seen my co-host? He's like the biggest homecoming fan you could ever find, and he also, <laughs> yeah. Has, yeah. He also yeah. has the biggest arms of any guy doing podcasts <laughs> in the yeah. space. So I got to be careful what I say. You have to agree. I get <laughs> it. I get <laughs> it. Yeah. Again, I say this all the time, but I take everything as it's a snapshot in time, right? So yeah, as much. I like the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man films, even though I don't like him as Spider-Man. I like the films, mm -hmm. except for the third one. Um, I like the Garfield Spider-Man, at least the first one. I like the Amazing Spider-Man one. Um, and again, but these are just snapshots in time. They're, they were both different, even though they had Can't wait till it's done in time. <laughs> and, <laughs> and now this one you is completely different, and they're going in a different direction. And in a way, I was kind of okay with that because we've gotten the other ones before. So, again, not to go off on a tangent, we seem to always do this when I get with you we guys. Like, when I'm with you guys, we always talk about Spider-Man. It never fails. <laughs> well, it's uh, subliminal Spidey messaging. Poster. It's in the background. Yeah. The it's all Spidey right? back yeah, here to yeah, help yeah, segue yeah. us. But, uh, but, no. So, that's my feeling on it. Uh, so, you guys all know now. So, But I was gonna, I'm going to pick the last one I will pick Please. is Mortal Kombat. Oh, oh, man. So, Pete, Mortal uh, Kombat. It's... It's couch, but I'm pumped for it. Right? I'm very yeah. excited for this movie. All right. Zednik, Mortal Kombat. All right. Nobody crucify me, but <laughs> I usually try and enjoy all forms of entertainment, but I just have not ever been interested in Mortal Kombat. Not the video game either? No. So oh, okay. I'm, I think I'm going to pass on this one. Okay. At the very least, I might check it out, but it's not something that, that's really on my radar well the original films had really really killer like house soundtracks yes <laughs> the so first mortal kombat's really good so it's, if you it's wanna, really really you good. know if, if the music okay. is is any push maybe you'll get some craziness like that and that's always fun okay. carlos uh you know what it'll be dependent on the trailer like i okay. i love mortal kombat i'm really into the newest game but right. uh mk is also a franchise that could go either way so yeah that, yeah Remember yeah, the not... acting in the the acting in the original yes. ones was a little rough. So <laughs> I, yeah. I I I hear you on that one. Uh, Caruso's. You go for, yeah. I know nothing about. Mortal you know nothing about Mortal Kombat. You nothing. know, honestly, just because the soundtrack could be banger, right? I might have to do the theater just so I could. <laughs> yeah. Like when it's gone. There's definitely yeah. gonna be like one Evanescent song in that soundtrack. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's, that's really gonna come wrap me yeah. up inside. Yeah. It's definitely going to be there. It might be in the credits, but it'll be on that side. <laughs> All right. So the last thing I wanted to talk about is the future of theaters mm. Um, mm. and where we think how not so much the future, but do you think there is a future and what kind of how do you think they're going to go about um, these these movies in in the future? How are we going to see them? Uh, which ones do we think are going to get released? theatrically in the big form or, and which ones do we think will just go straight to streaming or do we think that eventually everything's going to be going to streaming um, with no theaters left anymore I'll start that's my stance that's where I think this is going and I hate that I'm being I sound pessimistic on this one but I don't I just I said this before I think everyone came on when it comes to the finances of it I don't see why a studio would continue to split split their finances with a theater chain when they can just take everything for themselves if they put directly to streaming. Like there's no reason for them to continue doing that. And uh, you can still promote it. You can still do all the marketing. You can still get everything. And the money, all the money you get back from that is just theirs. There's no splitting anything. So eventually money wins. We know that in life, in the end of the day, money wins. So I think this is the beginning of that phase happening where yes theaters are eventually going to be obsolete that's my opinion so carlos i'll go to you next yeah i think i i, I think they'll be massively reduced and kind of for the same reason the economics of it but not even so much on the studio and the business side of things but just for the the family guys and it's like even a single person, like why would you pay the 18, 20 bucks to go to see a movie in the theater 
when you know you can watch that same movie at home and there'll be certain ones that you have a strong love for and that have a massive draw but there'll be ones where it's like well i could put my boots on and get in my car and go spend the money to go see it in the theater or i could just hit a button and watch it on the comfort of my couch type of thing so i think that'll be the thing that really erodes the theater going experience is just the consumer choice piece of it so I think it'll kind of become a boutique type of deal where you pay a premium price. They'll probably work a dinner into it. You won't see the big multiplexes anymore. You'll probably see theaters for like 50 to 75 people, which is kind of the way the newer theaters and the renovated ones have been going here. So yeah, that's kind of my guess is they'll still be around, but they will be a fifth of the amount of people using them. All right, <clears throat> Daddy Bats, what do you think the type of movies that will, if we're, if this plan is going in the way we think it's going, what movies do you think we will see released theatrically? I uh, see. I, I still think theaters are going to, they're going to come back. Okay. Um, I think we like to go out. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's just really this crazy, awful year that we're going through here, but I don't, I think the days of billion dollar box office that's gone, mm-hmm. but I do think that, it'll get somewhat back to normal. I think you'll see shorter theatrical runs. I still think like the Batman and the big tent pole movies will go to the theaters first. I think HBO will have no problem changing their formula because they're going to get all these subscribers anyway, and they're going to probably wind up keeping them. So I see a little bit of, of what we had reduced by about 25 or 30%. And then I think maybe after maybe four weeks, five weeks, then, then, they're going to lose that big tent pole movie. So I see shorter theater runs, but I still think we like to go out. I mean, we've all been home. We, we are comfortable staying home, but man, when this thing breaks and we get a chance to, I mean, you know, I want to travel again. There's a lot of things we all want to yeah. do. You guys are young guys. I mean, you got your lives, you got kids. So, I mean, I just think we forget. We'll forget about a lot of this stuff and we'll go back to our old habits. And maybe you want to go to the homeland. You want to go see Italy. Like, you know, that's and, right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. I, you know, we were planning to do something like that, but you know, so I think our old habits return, but Eric, I do agree that it's going to be on the theaters too. And, and Carlos, you talked about it. They, they might have to come up with their own subscription services, right? They might have to come up with, uh, with specials on, on food. Um, maybe they sell merchandise in there from the movies and t-shirts and, they're going to have to get really creative and and like really that. try to earn I like that a lot. Our, our wanting to go back into it, you know. But I think the people that want to go to the theaters are going to go, you know. But then you got people like my wife who we really got to drag her to go see a movie. Mm-hmm. So for her, it it doesn't matter. You know, she's right. She would go see Wonder Woman because I would drag her to it and she would enjoy it. <laughs> But now she's like, oh, it's great. It's on. We're going to be able to watch it on <laughs> Christmas Day. So, you know, but that's what I got my kids for. And I got some buddies of mine that we like to go. So, right. Including one right down there. That's yeah. right. Or yes. all of you, if you want to come. I hope shy. one day. Come on. I, hope, I, hope, <laughs> I told you, I told you this Carlos afternoon. King, I'm, I'm dying to come at, down to Shard Town. Deep down. Ice Walker Drive. I'm that's trying to right. go to Wrigley at Comiskey. I won't call it anything else. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I haven't. Yeah, I haven't been to Chicago since I think 2005. I had, I auditioned for American Idol. I'll put it out there. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So I did that, and I was in Chicago. I did it in Chicago, oh, um, nice. at Soldier Field. Oh um, wow! I remember that. Sure. When it yes, was there. it yeah, was yeah. raining and freezing, and not a good environment for singing. But <laughs> yeah, it literally was Pete. We walked down on the field. You had an associate producer in front of you. You sang like the first, actually, Justice League. first and a half of the song, whatever song. <laughs> 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 oh boy. Yeah. So I'd like to get back with the long story short. I'd like to get back. Yeah. Well, uh, we are all going to get together at some We're point. Here. Yes. That yeah. is definitely going to We're happen. Here. We're all going to get together. Some hopefully next year, sometime we all get together. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But, uh, so yeah, we, it has to be um, done. So I, I really agree with you and Carlos. I'm 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 kind of going to combine is is where my thoughts are at. I I really think there's going to be a lot of experimenting at least the first two years, 2020, uh, 2022, and maybe 2023, where I think you're going to look at more strategic event type theatrical runs, maybe two, three weeks, four weeks, where you can go there. 
I think the merchandise idea is is very cool. Have some stuff there, kind of turn it into like an event, like feel like you're going to see like a concert, but a concert that's there for three, four weeks, kind of like a Broadway play. Um, but I also agree with Carlos where I, I, I was thinking the theater going experience is going to get smaller and a little mm. bit more, not exclusive, but a bit more, um, it's going to be like an event, you know, you go, you, you really commit to an hour before the movie, an hour after, maybe there's drinks before, maybe they expand the bar and the food and there's way more of an eating option. Um, I definitely think, cause they're going to have to get people to come first and foremost. So really food, drink and stuff to buy is what gets people somewhere. It's true. Um, and have the film come to HBO max three or four weeks later. So I still for the theaters to even have a shot at coming back with everything we just said, I don't think you can do the same day release. No, I think you have to right. be like, no. okay, you yeah. got to see it. Wonder uh, the Batman's available for March 1st to March 31st or March 30th. Yeah. Are, are there 31 days in March? Yeah, sure. Whatever. Until March 31st. <laughs> and then it goes to, and then it goes, I have my, ma- I've, I've graduated. I have my master's. Um, <laughs> uh, and then like April 1st, it goes to HBO max. And then it goes away. Um, so I feel like they're going to play around with a lot of stuff, but I don't think they're dead, dead yet. Because I think filmmakers, even though we're seeing they don't really have as much power as they tried to say they did, um, I think too many people in the industry are still going to try to get stuff out theatrically, at least at the beginning. And then maybe 2024, they say all that was a waste of money. So streaming only. I hear you, man. All that. Except... The Batman's never going to go away. The Batman. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that Batman better not. That well, better that be released probably, in the theaters. Yeah, I that, will be pissed. That's going to be in the theater. I don't care if I need right. a hazmat suit. <laughs> but, but, we're like with the but, shields on, and we're like we're like in an aim suit. So you ever see the aim suit? I will wrap myself up in Reynolds wrap to go see that movie. <laughs> but I will say the, that the will human be, condoms from uh, that, Naked Gun, right? Yeah. Yeah. That will be the movie where you kind of see there that's the one they're hoping it's not tenet, not even wonder woman that's the one they're gonna yeah. hope that's a year and a half away so I'm i know but that so gives them far. enough time the back is gonna be the movie that saves the theaters i'm telling you i i would agree it, it said would it. take a superhero right to save the theater so in the pattinson greatest one of all time in yes. pattinson we trust. what did i say he pays the bills yeah, yeah he well he does that. yeah he does in a <laughs> lot of aspects he does so Zednik, we know Warner Brothers is doing this. Do you think that Sony, Paramount, the other studios might follow suit? With absolutely, because because Nick- if they don't, they're losing out on money themselves. So and- where do you think Netflix? Do you think? Because I mean, prior mm-hmm. to this happening, I, I will on our podcast that we did last night, which will be released tonight, by the way. Cool. Uh, Pete and I discussed Godzilla vs Kong oh, because yeah. Netflix had put in a bid for it to go to streaming. Yeah. So. And that was Warner Brothers property. So where do you think Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime? Do you think they'll do try it. and make? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> see, it's, it's, it's tough because you want to say yes, right? I mean. Maybe Sony would do a PlayStation exclusive. Maybe. I mean, my, my thing is like this, like at this point with this whole thing is like kind of like what Pete's been saying, like with Wonder Woman all along is. At a certain point, you just have to release these films because you can't get three without two. So I'm like, if if there's spinoffs and sequels and whatever that's involved with these films, you just can't sit on them. Like the last thing you want to do is do another delay because you just can't do that. So that's why, in a way, I'm kind of glad that Warner Brothers did what they did because now it kind of stops the whole delay, 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 and then you're losing out on hype. Like. For me, this is going to be a huge test for, for Wonder Woman because it's going to prove, like, did people stay with the hype all along? Did they get off the rail? Um, like, it's it's more ex- accessible or so we think, but, you know, it's, you it's mean, a big... Yeah, you mean people outside of people like us who are going to watch it anyway. Yeah, because okay. it's, bi- it's a big test. Like, this thing's been delayed so many times. Yep. Dude, Dude, those Doritos almost bags with her picture on it came out like months ago. Yeah, yeah the Dorito That's, stuff. Yeah. All that extra promotion and right, stuff absolutely. is all mm-hmm. come and gone. It's yeah. gone. Yeah, I mean, she's a huge draw, but she hasn't really been in anything since she had the death in an aisle that was supposed to come out so, too yeah like, yeah that's true but Dude, i actually think they should have dropped it sooner i think waiting till christmas is the, yeah. i think they should have done it in november at some point yeah or halloween you know, they, they've been sitting on it forever like what are they waiting for it's you know like something like snyder's justice league obviously needed to be finished but like yeah. wonder mm-hmm. woman's been done it's and been done. finished like what are you waiting for 
Yeah. Everyone's already been home. Like Christmas is no excuse. Yeah. Well, and with the spike in cases, <laughs> in retrospect, they should have kept that October date, right? Because it wasn't October yeah. 2nd. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. Right. Yeah. The the everything was was kind of getting back to normal during the summer, so they probably should have just stuck. The August was the original date, right? That the original yeah. pushback date that they had was August. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but the should've problem was, see, the problem with August was not every state's theaters were open. And New York's weren't, and LA's weren't. And if you don't have New York and LA, you can't do it if New York and LA are. Yep. are so, so you don't have it now either. So what's the big deal? Yeah, well, that's, that's probably what they're saying. Right, yeah. It's on the streaming, right? So, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's going to be, uh, I was, again, I am going to see it, guys. Uh, I'm not sure Christmas Eve. If it, if it comes out like the night before, like it usually does, they usually have the. Are your theaters the open? Yeah, our theaters are still open. So Ooh. I am... the low the AMC theaters are the Regals are. Yeah, yeah the Regals. We're are. not here, right? No, ours. No, our, ours ours aren't open. Ours, ours closed again about, about a week ago. Yeah. Nico and I were supposed to go see Mank two weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, it closed on when he when he was out of his quarantine at least. Well, yeah, when I was the other day. I came <laughs> but that's yes. no longer happening. <laughs> Eric, to add on to what you said and asked real quick, I, I really think that at least with this year netflix has shown they will pay a lot mm-hmm. for a lot i mean they spent the mm-hmm. house on trial of seven on yeah. mank on ma rainey's black bottom mm-hmm. um they were gonna spend it on godzilla they were gonna yeah. spend it on no godzilla yeah. so i guess and they were gonna spend it on no time to die so i see a lot of stuff going to netflix and then don't sleep on amazon or apple tv amazon really wants to make its way mm-hmm. into the um film hype world mm-hmm. And with I'm expecting the sound of metal to be pretty big. Um, and also don't sleep on Apple TV who signed a deal with Leonardo DiCaprio to produce something. So I know Apple TV and they just got uh, Tom Holland's Cherry, which was directed by the Russo brothers, which, you know, what yeah. we've seen is if the Russo's name and Tom Holland are on it, like the devil all the time had a big I get the Russo's calling. are like the only Italians I don't get into I know. to be honest with you. But, but, so, <laughs> but so I could see Netflix being the big one to scoop up a lot and then yeah. Amazon and Apple TV right behind and Hulu is still struggling with the movie game. They're good with the TV game, but they're struggling getting the movies to land. Well, and that. to your point, Nico, like that endorses this play by Warner Brothers for HBO Max because yeah. like Apple TV has been out forever. And so I have Apple TV Plus. Same, yeah. yeah. I have literally never watched anything on I there. bet. Yeah, no. Same, same. Or, or that's oh, you got to watch the morning show, man. It's great. Oh, <laughs> yeah. man. No, it, it's like I turn that thing on and it's just like. Yeah, Greyhound I, was actually putting You're like through. scrolling through it, Carlos. You're like, it looks cool. It's a cool remote, isn't it? <laughs> and then yeah. you immediately go to Netflix and you go it's to Amazon. Cool, and exactly. Go to, right? Cool know. remote. Yeah. I, I, I literally came into my basement a day this week and I was like, I'm going to watch something on here. Hey, Apple. And, and I scroll around on Apple TV Plus and then I jump out, go down to the YouTube app. I watched the Batman trailer and shut the whole thing down. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm going to do something else. <laughs> Oh, I love that Fair. movie. Fair. It's not even a real movie. It's just I know. I was like, we haven't seen the movie yet. It's just I, the trailer. It's, it's already my favorite movie. I love it. Yeah. But because Eric skipped me again, like he did earlier in the show. I did. I see was. Movie. I was coming to you last. Yeah. So you're gonna uh, be the. You're you the were the best for last, Pete. You were yeah, the like little, yeah. So here you go, Pete. Go ahead. Well, here's the thing. I don't think movies are going anywhere. I think this is just a place in time, to be honest. I think movies are going to come back. I think they'll actually come back stronger because I think everyone wants to get the hell out of the house. You know, you it doesn't kill you. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's eventually it won't. <laughs> it's going to be like two years, but I, I think people will be cautious in the beginning, but I think movies yeah. will be back strong and stronger than ever. Uh, we're we're, we're going to want to be out. And the, the whole thing about the social experience of a movie theater, you guys said it earlier, like when, when you're in a movie theater watching a horror movie and everyone's all cr- creeped out and scared, like it's the greatest feeling in the world. When you guys saw Endgame in, th- in the theater and Captain America catches the hammer, you know, like Tim the Tool Man, like yeah. everyone got up and cheered like it was nobody's business. Like you can't beat that. You can't. You can't do that in 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 the comfort of your own home. There's oh, a- watch me, Pete. Watch me. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Get him, so, Batman. Get him. Yeah, but like I don't know. It, I think movie theaters will be back. It, it may take them a while, and I think. You, you all have some excellent points. They're going to have to get creative and they're going to have to come up with new ideas, but mm-hmm. I, I don't think you're going to be able to keep this industry down personally. And I know I a lot of people have that idea, but I, I just don't think so. I lost one ball. You, you lost a ball. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think, I think, yeah, I think that we'll probably get for like, um, like two, maybe two for one type deal. Like you pay one price, see two films, mm-hmm. 
know, just things like that to just bring people back. And I think they do some of these things now, like they have like sporting events and, and stuff that they have on Fathom. I guess it's Fathom is the big one. I don't mm-hmm. know if you guys have it, but we have yeah. it here, right? Yeah. Fathom TV. So things like that, I'm sure will probably bring people back to the theater. But um, I don't know, man. I just, I, again, I always follow the money. That's how I, how I, I always follow the money. But don't you and, think that you, you make more money selling movie tickets than you do like one subscription? Like you but, pay $15 a month. I can go see Batman like four times in a theater and it's more than the subscription, you know? And if I bring friends, that's more money. Yeah, I just, I just feel like that makes them more money, even if they split it. But I think, well, that's what I mean. Is, yeah. That, go ahead. Oh, so, yeah. But I think it's like, if you go see the Batman and that's the only movie you go see, and there's a lot of people that only go see two movies yeah. a year. Right. <clears throat> But if you tap those people to pay your 15 bucks 12 times a year, you're ahead of the game kind of thing, right? And like Eric said, it's off the hop. All that money comes to you as opposed to 750. I just feel like movies are such a, I feel like they're already like a niche audience that, you know, like, you know, Daddy Bat said he's got to drag his wife out to see any movie, you know, (laughs) but he's he's a movie fan. So I feel like movie fans keep the business alive. You, You can't keep them away from the movies. Anybody else they bring into the theater is a bonus for them to begin with. I mean, it takes the, the other way I look at it, it like it takes away a date spot, right? Like most dinner in a movie is a lot of people's yeah. first date. I don't think a lot of people are dating right now. Quarantine. You know? I think that's gonna no. change. No, I'm just saying going forward, Pete. People I'm not just talking saying, about hey, right come now. over. I got Zack Snyder's Justice League. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure that works. Yeah. yeah I'd be well, sprinting. The hell are you talking about? I'm yeah, sure okay. some 15 year old girl. You're, you're not running parents. over to catch 300. <laughs> I'm sure the 15 year old girl's parents is gonna love that. Love that idea. <laughs> Come over right? and watch Sucker Punch with me, babe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there'll be no Sucker Punch being watched. I can tell you right now. Oh, it's funny, Eric. You Maybe forgot one important punch. movie though that you what? didn't mention. Go ahead, bring it up. IMAX black and white Zack Snyder Justice League cut that's going to be released. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's how he Zaddy wants us to. That's see because it. I'm so thrilled that that movie is coming out. Let Zaddy. me tell you, I'm I'm uh, waiting Zaddy with bated breath to see I'm, that. I'm waiting Just for wait Zaddy for the and Zaddy. That's the movie announced. I want. Zaddy and Zaddy. Z- don't Zaddy go there. Zaddy and Zaddy. There we go. Yeah. Zaddy, yeah. do not go there with the Batman series. That, it's coming, Eric. I'm telling Pete, you. Because Pete will kick your ass for that. I will. I, he will. I've got, I've got, shut, I've got, shut it up. I can't I'm keep his, look, if he's not, if it's not about those pictures, then I'm not going to keep anybody there. <laughs> what pictures? Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Oh, Pete, you had to go there, didn't you? Uh, I've been uh, doing it all night. <laughs> you have, you have. We'll tell you later. Maybe. Anyway. <laughs> oh, I'm going to know. Don't worry. <laughs> so uh, really quickly, any closing thoughts? Anyone want to just. Jump in with some closing thoughts. No, no, territory. You know what I'm, I'll tell you what I'm interested in. I'm going to really be really curious what uh, Disney does. Yeah. Because they are the box office kings, right? Mm-hmm. And it, as much as I don't think they're worried about anything that Warner Brothers is doing, I kind of, I will be surprised. I don't think Disney will go the full route that Warner Brothers went. Mm. Now, they may announce Black Widow, but I think they're in a position where they're going to sit back and they're going to wait and see how things evolve. Um, and I'll be the first to come on and tell you guys I was wrong, but I'll be very shocked. I think I think Disney's going to do announce one thing at a time. We'll see. We'll know in a few days. Mm-hmm. And that, that's interesting. Yeah, Disney especially. And like I said, the other studios, um, if they'll try and hop onto another service, mm-hmm. you know, and, and release their films um, to streaming right away and theater, maybe the hybrid model, or maybe just the streaming, who knows? But Disney's um, like the Yankees, you know what I mean? They're they are. Like, they definitely are. They're there and they're like, they're not too worried what anybody else is doing. They definitely, although, I not to go into sports, but I heard a rumor that the Mets might be, are discussing a trade for Mike Trout. Really? Oh, yes. Really? Wow. Really? Well, I mean, yes. like, wow. you know, <laughs> this goes to the Caruso's. I know Brian Cashman's a huge fan of uh, Schwarber, so he might be wearing a different Ooh. color pin. That's shirt. okay. Kyle's gonna be. Uh, you know what? I, I, you know, you know, guys know how I feel about the Cubs. He, he was, he was a legend in that World Series, and he, he was clutch. You know, he Plus never World really Series. became what we thought he was going to become, but he goes to New York with that short porch. I yeah, got no, I got. I'm one of those guys. Any of these guys that were on that Cub team, because I never thought I'd ever see the Cubs win in my lifetime. So I wish all those guys well. I, yeah. I, if they go somewhere else, I yeah. root for them. Even Chapman. Well, Chapman, we uh, let go. 
But Chapman, <laughs> I, listen. Hey, we don't win it without those... Chapman. You know, no. <laughs> we I, was don't at win his, uh, I was at his uh, ring game when uh, when Brett Gardner hit the three run home run. Oh the yeah, top of the ninth to put it. Yeah, three, yeah, two. yeah, yeah. Infuriated me. Uh, Especially since it's Brett Gardner, like especially because it's Brett Gardner, not a, <laughs> not a, not really a home run hitter at all. No. Uh, but well, yeah, you could thank Manfred for that one in his juiced ball. Go yeah. White Sox, <laughs> Carlos. Sox. I hope we're not boring you. I hope oh, we're not he's boring you. your Blue Jays guy. Blue Jays, you Blue Jays fan? No, my Canadian came full bore through that portion of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you are you a Maple Leafs guy? He's a Flames yeah. fan, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, Calgary. Oh, Flames. Oh, Flames you got Johnny Gartrell. That's, that's good. Yeah, we got Johnny. We actually got a pretty decent little young team. I think it's like a headspace piece with the Calgary Flames right now. Mm-hmm. I, I might become a Flames fan because Blackhawks hockey isn't going to be fun to watch. This year, so. No, you got some rough years ahead of you. So yeah, jump on the train, man. We're like non-offensive to everybody. Welcome. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. you guys, you guys are so welcoming. You know what? I'm going to take you up on that offer. There you go. <laughs> yeah, baby. We, we got cool jerseys. And if you, you do have cool jerseys. in sports, in my opinion, honestly. <laughs> yeah. You do have cool jerseys. Yeah, yeah get that blasty jersey and it's a they do have cool jerseys. The Blackhawks yes. colors. Yeah. So yeah, there we go. Go flames, go. We got, we got I feel like I'm the only person who liked the flaming horse though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He he all of a sudden has this like resurgence of love around here with them putting out those retro jerseys, but it's like <laughs> yeah. I remember when nice. they retired that thing. They were, yeah. It was they like, nice. yeah, he was snotty the flaming donkey. So <laughs> when you that, I must not laugh at Scotty the Flame of Donkey. Well, I, I'm an Islander fan, and the new arena they're building is literally three minutes from my house. So nice. Oh, you that's cool. the best hockey that's team awesome. in group right here. Yeah, I do right now. My hockey team is the best. I am the pumped the Devils always bring back the Christmas jersey, though. I love the red, white, and green. <laughs> yeah, that one's cool, man. The Tabasco. Oh, that's a good one. I never thought of that. Look at you, Canadian genius. I know, man. See, look, th- this is where I can bring the hype. And this is, br- this is why I brought you on this show. Yes. <laughs> All right, fellas. We're going to close this one down. So we'll start with Carlos. Go ahead and plug some stuff. Hey, yeah. You can follow me on Canadian Cape Crusader on Twitter. I'm going to actually check my Twitter feed to find out about this beef I allegedly have with them. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I've been pretty non-offensive for a while. I, I can use a beef sandwich right now. So you know, yeah. I mean, yeah, no, brother. I, I honestly think you got somebody else. <laughs> must be. Must be. I got attacked for saying that Mookie Betts would never win a World Series with the Dodgers. Oh, and now they're all coming at me. And I tweeted that six months ago. Baseball? If you're Probably. fighting with somebody about baseball, I can yeah. a thousand and ten percent guarantee yeah. Yeah. it was not me. It was not <laughs> So, there you go. So we got something I tweeted six it. months ago, just so you know. We yeah. crushed the, we, you know, we swashed the beef right away. No yeah. Just, anymore, no exactly. Zeddy, just looked, don't tweet about any more Joker pictures, will you? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, the main thing. so bad for him. <laughs> I'm just going to look at you right now while Carlos plugs his stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the, the main plug would be for the Nerd Room podcast. You can follow us on the Nerd, at the Nerd RM on Twitter. And uh, this, uh, the 18th of this month, we're looking at doing uh, a thing on the Get Vocal platform. And Eric, we'd love you to join us on that. We're going to be doing a wrap up of uh, season one of The Mandalorian. And yeah, I know, I don't know if Tim has reached out to you or not yet. It's been back and forth in our DM. And <laughs> he has Yoda, not. So the Yoda lamp there. So there you go. Spoilers. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> we'd love yes. to have you on. And Everybody else can join, but we, uh, yeah, we talked about having a seat for you, Big E. I know you uh, itching to talk some Star Wars. So, yeah, the Nerd Room podcast, we put out a show every Thursday. We're pretty proud of it. It's pretty, uh, yeah, it's a, a little show. bit of everything. Really good show. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you like a bit of collecting toys, retro toys, DC, Marvel, Star Wars, come come hit us up. Yeah, Pete's been on, so. Yeah, Fantastic, Pete's been on. fantastic guy. we got to have you on again. we got to have some of the... Uh, Vigilante crew on too. Now. Come, absolutely. To. B- building bridges. It's a good thing we squashed that beef. Yeah, right. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> we would have had you on regardless if if there was beef. We would have worked what it out. The somehow. Joker say got no beef, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jared Leto. Yeah. Jared Leto's Joker. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Nick, is that Nick can't escape it? Go ahead, Zedek. Go I'm ahead. just plug, a- plug away, uh, brother. Go ahead. But I'm not ready. I'm just kidding. You can you can follow. <laughs> <laughs> on Twitter at poppersly underscore 95. You can follow all my reviews for Mandalorian season two over at the let's go podcast. I will be having a double feature 
next week of reviewing David Fincher's Mank and The Mandalorian. So be on the nice, lookout for nice. that. Next week, we do have the Vigilante 1939 podcast. So go follow that. And we do have a cool giveaway that I will let Nico explain. Ooh, Good, more Nico. giveaways. Love it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like he just said, you could follow us uh, at the Vigilante 1939. That's us on Twitter. And what we're going to do is starting at uh, Sunday, which is St. Nicholas Day. All three of us are named. Yeah, baby. Yes. So we decided to do something special for that. So for uh, 12 days straight at 8 p.m., we're going to throw up a trivia question, either tweeted or a video of one of us uh, reading it out loud. And the first comment to wins, um, the first comment wins with the right answer. Of course, it has to be the right answer. And then I'll DM you with um, what swag you want. So we're giving away shirts and coffee mugs. And we have a variation of colors and sizes. So we want to make sure to get you exactly what you want. And you can only win once. So we're trying to spread the uh, the wealth here. And then, yeah, we're really excited for that. Do you have anything to add on that? Rules? No, no, no rules. That's good stuff. It's yeah. going to be yeah. the questions will vary between DC, Marvel, Star Wars, and maybe even some personal ones about us to see if some people really listen. Um, so that <laughs> will be the test. They're not, so they're not going to be hard. They're not going to no, be No, they're not hard, but they're not real easy either, though. No. You're going to have to think a little bit. But so. they're more easier than hard. Um, and then as for myself, you could follow me at NI at n-i-k-k-o-c-a-r-u-s-o that's at nico caruso on twitter and i also do tv and film review for the let's go podcast uh you can look for my review for amazon's the sound of metal uh this weekend so stay tuned for that nice, man. anything to plug what you reading no i'm you watching I'm, I'm excited i haven't read endless winter yet i'm gonna oh, yeah. go to the comic store tomorrow oh, i enjoyed it yeah king in black i'm gonna get into that and then i gotta catch up on detective i know you and you, batman you and, catwoman and batman Cat, batman yes. catwoman yeah. batman catwoman was phenomenal yeah. They're yes. holding them for me. So so by Monday, I'll have read them all, and then we could talk about it a little bit online. Beautiful. Think. Beautiful. And where can people find you? <laughs> where can they find me, Nick? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> At N. Caruso F Jr.? I guess. Yes. I don't know. Yeah. I'll, <laughs> I'll tag I'm him right in right. a tweet. <laughs> Hashtag he never yeah, plugs yeah. himself. <laughs> He never plugs yes, Batman. Daddy just Batman. just for the record, Batman Catwoman number one is very good. So Good. Yeah, I'm yeah, looking forward to it. It sounds like you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, and we're, we're again, good, huh? yeah. I made Eric read it. He did. Yeah. I wasn't going to read it. And he's no, you have to. Good. And then we discussed it a little bit last night on the podcast. Everyone that will be released in yeah. about 15 minutes after the was show that ends. your mailbag one. So, no, 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 this is a, no, no, no. a just a oh, hot topics okay. one that we gotcha. like normally do. So we'll be okay. doing handling that one. So Pete, go ahead. Tell them about all that and about where they can find you. You could find me on social media at Pete Illustrated. That's Twitter, Instagram, and Zack Snyder's favorite Vero. Uh, don't forget about the Straight Outta Gotham Facebook page, as well as the Straight Outta Gotham uh, private group. Follow Straight Outta Gotham on social media at straight underscore O underscore G. Also, we are trying to get to 250 followers. Yes. So we're having a contest right now, uh, SOG contest giveaway. If you help us, by liking, retweeting, and following, you can win a free copy of All-Star Batman number one signed by Scott Good Snyder with a certificate of authenticity from Main Street Comics in Milltown, New Jersey. So please follow us, interact with us, and also read my reviews on Detective Comics on the Dadgum original Batman on film.com. And uh, Eric, take it away. All right, guys, you can find me at Finally33. That's Finale33 on Twitter and Instagram as well. As Pete mentioned, hit us up on Facebook at the Street Out of Gotham fan page, um, fan group, sorry, and the show page. Also, I want to briefly point out, and I point this out on the podcast too, so if you guys hear it twice, I'm sorry. We are working on, actually a lot of us in here, and Carlos, if you want to be involved, let me know. We are working on doing some kind of fundraiser for To Feed the Hungry this Christmas. Uh, it's probably, we're probably going to do kind of some kind of like a telethon type show uh, in a couple of weeks where yeah, we'll, you will come on, we'll entertain. We're going to try and reach out to people to get, see if they can donate stuff and we can raffle it off. You guys can win prizes and all the proceeds that we get will go to some kind of um, either feeding the hungry or um, like here on Long Island, we have Island Harvest. So if we do it regionally, you guys can pick what you want to do for your own and we can you know, send it out that way. But uh, this, this, we know this year has been tough for a lot of people mm. and we know people are waiting online to get food, which in America and, and even the North in North America in yeah. 2020, that's just crazy yeah. to me. I can't, can't fathom that. So, uh, we want to try and give back cause let's face it. We're doing pretty okay. I think all of us yeah. are doing okay this, this year. So we're, we're planning something like that together, uh, together with other podcasting groups and hopefully, 
uh, we raise a little bit of money for Christmas and we can give, give back to the community. Yeah, man. Count me and the nerd room in for sure. Okay. So we'll, we'll definitely get, we'll have more details coming out guys in the next couple of days. Uh, I got to talk to everyone and see what they want to do and how we're going to um, get this thing rolling. I should have thought of this in September. So I apologize. everyone. We'll <laughs> I know it's really, we'll it's really it fast. And, yeah. We're trying to do this really quick, but we'll make uh, that's, yeah, that's something that I think, um, you know, uh, we have a we have a position, a little bit of a position in a space where we can do something. So I want to try and do that. So, uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think I've covered everything. So I want to thank all of you guys for joining Pete and I tonight. Uh, thank you. And thank you. you. For having us. Thank yeah, you. Thanks. Thank you. For you guys me. are all the best. Yep. Pete, Pete thanks pleasure, for hypnotizing man. me. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you've been hypnotizing me for a couple of days. Pat. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so oh, love you, Carlos. It's like <laughs> love, love you too, man. I, 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 I'm glad. Th this is just the the gut instinct. It was the blame Canada reaction that damn so <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I got enough countries on my back. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Six yeah, man. Well, I'm, I'm so well, happy I came on this live stream. I, I, I'm oh, happy you did too. Jesus man. Christ, it's Jason Bourne. <laughs> <laughs> it's Nick Zednick. <laughs> oh, vengeance. <laughs> Yeah. Oh God. Okay, guys. So for everyone here, for Nick, Daddy Bats, Nico, Carlos, Pete, I'm Eric Holzman. This is Straight Out of Gotham tonight, and thanks everyone for watching. Booyah. Booyah.